Welcome to the course Building with Nature in Hydraulic Engineering of Delft University of Technology. My name is Jill Slinger and I am your course coordinator. I am an associate professor at the Faculty of Civil Engineering and Geosciences. I also work at the Faculty of Technology, Policy and Management. Yes, I hold a dual appointment. I also hold an appointment as visiting professor at the Water Research Institute at Rhodes University in South Africa. It is precisely because of my cross-faculty, multidisciplinary experience with coastal and water engineering and with environmental decision-making that I was asked to develop this course. However, the course was not developed in isolation. It is given in collaboration with many colleagues from academia and industry. That's what I find so exciting about it. You will be exposed to the experience of eminent professors with a Building with Nature concept and practices. You will hear from experts at international companies what Building with Nature means to them, how they think it will influence their future business. You will also receive lectures in the form of short knowledge clips from internationally recognized researchers on the science underpinning Building with Nature. But what is building with nature? Building with nature is about using natural materials and working with natural processes in hydraulic design. My vision is to create a new generation of hydraulic engineers who can work effectively with ecologists and other stakeholders to realize nature-friendly hydraulic infrastructure. You will be challenged to think about and to apply the building with nature concept yourself and to discover when and where it is applicable and where the challenge li challenges lie in its further development. So the overarching learning goal of the course is to build the theoretical and practical design competence of students. This means that at the end of the course you will have the knowledge and skills first to understand relevant aspects of systems ecology theory and to be able to apply ecosystem based principles in your design practice. Second, you will be able to incorporate analytic elements from social ecological systems theory and multi-actor policy implementation in your designs. Finally, you will be able to apply a structured approach to integrate the diverse design requirements. But what do I really mean here and how will you learn this? Well, the course is structured along three concurrent lines. First, there's a theory line that will mainly be delivered via knowledge clips, short films explaining the core theory and concepts, films just like this one. They vary in length from a few minutes to 10 or 12 minutes. You are expected to view the knowledge clips prior to attending the tutorials when you apply them to the case study. The tutorials provide you with time to ask questions of the lecturers and to explore how to apply your new knowledge. This brings me to the second line, the project, which is actually the core of the course. In the project, which can be on a sandy or a muddy coastal environment, along a river or wetland, or in a harbour, you complete five assignments. The first assignment varies according to your background. If you're a hydraulic engineer, you'll start by developing a hydraulic design for the case study situation. You'll have to use your existing knowledge to develop this design. But if you're a planner or a policy professional, you'll use your planning background to undertake the first assignment, and so on. The second assignment represents the first design iteration. First, you'll apply newly acquired knowledge of the Building with Nature concept and design process. And next, you'll apply newly acquired knowledge of ecosystems and ecological processes in developing your own nature-based design. The third assignment is the next design iteration. Then you apply the concept of ecosystem services. You explore how the perspective of ecosystem services can alter the evaluation of your design and how this compares with a standard cost-benefit analysis. That brings me to the fourth design iteration. In the fourth design iteration, you consider issues of scale, the influence of choosing different time and spatial scales on your design. You learn about multi-actor systems, that many actors, people or stakeholders have different perspectives on a particular environmental system and a particular locality. 
Their perspectives and interests differ, as do their resources and their power to influence the decision process. What does this mean? It means they place different requirements on the functionality of the designs. You will learn to take these issues into account in your revised design for assignment 4. In the final design iteration, you'll learn how to use your knowledge of shifting societal values to refine your building with nature design. The course will close with a presentation of all the final designs. That brings me back to the concurrent lines. The third line running through the course is the guest lectures. I mentioned earlier that eminent professors will share their knowledge of building with nature applications and its practice with you. Three professors will pre present guest lectures and representatives from international dredging companies will tell you about the implications of building with nature worldwide. Besides this, you will be supported in your learning by ecologists with expertise in eco-engineering, hybrid engineering solutions and in ecological evaluation methods. All in all, an exciting and challenging course lies ahead of us. Finally, I would like to express grateful thanks to my colleagues in academia and industry and all the partners who have supported the Faculty of Civil Engineering and Geosciences in this endeavour. Thank you and enjoy the course.